left Daily Wire. Um, was she fired or did she leave of her own volition? I'm not going to speak to this topic, Pierce. At, at all? At all. You can't give me any uh, insight into why she departed? No hints, no nothing. I'm not going to speak to this. Can, can, I ask, can I ask why? I mean, you can ask. No, no, I'm not you can ask why you don't want to say anything. Um, again, you can ask. America's been the law since 1933. You charge the same amount, and you got about, I don't know, 10% fewer Snickers in it. <laughs> Look, you're also getting rid of junk fees. So it's hit. This is Grand Theft Auto 5. Okay, Grand Theft Auto 5, and this is one of the latest and greatest newest games, is it not? Uh, no, it's actually pretty old. All right, so what? Okay, what's the point of this game? I'm just gonna, I'm, uh, well, there I am. Now I feel a certain kind of connection and like ethical responsibility here. Oh, well, I, oh. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Was that a bad guy or was just a random civilian I just shot for no reason? That was a guy just strolling like you. Well, he looked like he was up to no good, frankly. So how do I how do I steer so that I don't look drunk? Oh sh Use the right stick to steer. Push triangle. Oh. What? Who just shot me? The cops? But you thought at first light this morning when you saw the pictures of actually what that bridge looks like with the barge uh, slammed into it there. What were your initial thoughts? Well, it was something out of an action movie. It's something you never think you would see. And uh, being here right now looking at it is even more surreal. And it just makes you think about, again, those families, those individuals that were on that bridge, those folks that are even on that, that vessel, even more. Because no one should have to endure. And I'm going to be the first to ask that CNN and everyone else stop showing the video. All right, move on. Nothing to see here. Please. Nothing to see here, thing where I'm not sure if people actually care about gigantism or if they're using it as a proxy for other things that they don't like. Like I could totally imagine a well, person- Well, I care about it. Sure, so, yeah, you might. Yeah, sorry, I, it just in okay. general, that's yeah. That's okay. Um, <clears throat> Cause like I could imagine somebody saying that like they don't trust like a large government, they think there's too much, uh, you know, prone to tyranny or something like that, but also be supportive of an institution like the Catholic Church, which is literally, you know, one guy who has a direct right, line to God. Right, but they can't tax. Um, well, I mean, there's- And they don't have a military. That and is- And they can't conscript you. True, right. yeah. And they can't throw you in jail. I've been present for the birth of every little creature on this island. <laughs> Surely not the ones that have bred in the, in the wild. Uh, no. Actually, they can't breed in the wild. The population control is one of our security precautions. There's no unauthorized breeding in Jurassic Park. 
Uh, and how do you know they can't breathe? Well, because all the animals in Jurassic Park. Are Gay! Oh. We've engineered them that way. How was your evening? Very satisfactory. And yours? She was. Not a she. Mm. And, uh. Was that a problem for you? If you like surprises, you're gonna love the locker rooms at Planet Fitness. I'm starving. Planet Fitness. Life's full of surprises. Well, you know, so much of the privilege I have, the ability to uh, be here, sitting here right now, is really because of so many trans women of color who have consistently put their lives on the line throughout history, you know? I'm grateful to have the access to the resources I've, I've had because I don't know what would have happened if, if I didn't. A great track, guys. What's the deal? Uh, are, are you sure that was sounding okay? I'll be honest, fellas, it was sounding great, but I could have used a little more cowbell. <laughs> The computer which controlled the machines, by then known only as X, sent two Terminators back through time. The first Terminator was programmed to strike at my mother in the year 1970 before I was born. It failed. The second was set to strike at me directly when I was still a child. As before, the Resistance was able to send a lone warrior, a protector for me. It was just a question of which one of them would reach me first.
Jones, how are you? Jeremy, I love the quartering. I love Salty Cracker. I love it all. Uh, salty Cracker, how are you? Boy, that just sounds crazy. I can't believe I'm joined by the Roseanne Bar. I'm so glad. You're very welcome. Nice to be here. Who is Jeremy and what is the quartering? Well, I'm a commentator, I guess. I'm a Midwestern dude who uploads four to five videos a day covering everything from big tech to YouTube, to technology, to pop culture, movies, video games, whatever's going on in the world, I've got you covered. We're still on YouTube right now. <laughs> uh, Bud Light has decided to just quadruple down in the face of losing nearly $30 billion. Reimagine, I'm sorry, again, I missed it again, I'm out of practice. Reimagining. They are literally trying to put a content creator in prison uh, for their opinions. You're gonna find interviews on my channel, you're gonna find deep dives, you're gonna find breaking news, you're gonna find long-term coverage, everything you need to stay in touch, you're gonna find on The Quartering. If you're watching this video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I really think you're gonna find one or two videos a day that you really enjoy. Good day. Hi. Happy to be back. <laughs> yeah. Happy to be back again for sure. How are you? I'm doing awesome. How are you? <sighs> well, I just ran up and down three flights of stairs. <laughs> and That's I'm more good. out of <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm more out of wind than uh, I care to admit, but uh, <laughs> yes, that's that's a thing. The uh, what happens. Yeah, I knew I was waiting on a uh, package. That needed to get signed for. Oh, so yeah, I had to do that. Did it arrive? It did. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dogs were going uh, berserk, yeah. but um, nonetheless, it was everything was okay. Nice. How's your Thursday going? Great. Um, I I heard back from the Biltong people too. They're gonna send me some meat, so I'm stoked. Oh, is that? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Shout out to the shout out to. Whoops, we don't want that. There. <laughs> uh, shout out to the uh, the Biltong folks. Their meat is a, a big part of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I can't wait to try it. It sounds incredible. <laughs> yeah, I recommend the um the Wagyu stuff. Yeah, they um, said they're sending the yeah. that's a, they said they're sending that whatever they supply you with. So I can't wait to try it. Yeah, it's uh it's uh oh sorry about the overlay. We'll have a new overlay tomorrow. I just decided to try and use, you know, we normally use Rumble Studio. There were some mm. technical glitches and I felt like maybe the video didn't look as good as I had hoped. Okay. So we're going to try this. We're going to try to use StreamYard for now and see how that goes. What a day. Yeah. Um, Thursday. What have you been up to today? Oh, I, I've been working on merch. So <laughs> I saw that you need somebody who will, uh, Print something for you. Um, I don't know if you found somebody. <laughs> yeah, crypto.fashion might be able to. I could Ooh, probably crypto.fashion. I'll have to look yeah. them up then. Yeah, because I, I think I'm uh tentatively I was thinking, okay, I looked on Redbubble and saw other merch that had that slur on it. Yeah, but yeah. the difference is I think those they were meant as allies. <laughs> so it's <different>. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. But, I, yeah, I was just going to go ahead and try them anyway. Um, but then they wanted like five designs and I only have one. So if I just slightly that, change some colors up in the background then and have five variations, maybe that would work. <laughs> I'm going to guess that that is not going to. Here's why I probably wouldn't go with them is because they may allow certain T-shirts like slip through the cracks there. Right. But you're you. And right, so true. you're going to put it up for sale and 500 people are going to be flaggets and, uh, <laughs> and try to take, try to take it down. The one thing you could potentially do is 
I don't know if you get in touch with a screen printer in your area, you could maybe have it oh. printed, you know, and then just ship it yourself. Get a PO box. Okay. And then ship it yourself. Not to undersell how many shirts you're gonna sell, but you know, you'll sell like most of them on day one. Right. And then exactly. you might sell onesie twosie here and there. That's it's something true. to consider. Yeah, I'll look into that. Okay. Or you could get yourself your own screen printing machine because that's a business oh. write off. And then you just print it yourself and then you don't have to worry about it. That and could then... work. I need to check how much they are. Okay. The My friend got me because he knows I I have like, uh, I always do these like hats, various hats. He mm -hmm. bought me a, a screen printer that's made specifically for hats. And it wasn't very, exp I mean, it wasn't like crazy, insane, expensive. Okay. Um, so I bet a, a personal like t-shirt one would probably be. Here you go, Mel. I own I co own flagrant tri triggers. Okay. Are you concerned that you express on trigger on Twitter? We own our printer and Shopify is just the storefront. If Shopify ever gives us issues, haven't so far. Oh, okay. Okay. Sweet. I'll reach out. I'll reach out then. Yeah, Shopify is is what you would classify as generally woke, but uh -huh. they're Oh, I forgot the, sorry. I don't know if Melanie knows about this. I said right off and I forgot the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time there's a business right off the, uh, you guys maybe be uncool in front of Melanie to use my. Oh flag with man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's but amazing. The, the mob is correct. Um, yeah. So if, if you think about it, you could print, then you print whatever shirts you want. Obviously you'll have to limit your, like, to do it at home, the more colors, the more time it's going to take. But if right. you can, if you can get around it, you know. Okay. Okay. Oh, I put too much mio in there. <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, counting down in my head because I knew the countdown. If people didn't see this online, but I literally sat in my chair with like eight seconds to go. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm, I'm sure I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I'm like, crap. I need water took some Mio and just like spray oh, it. So and I like, like look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got and that's, yeah. Oh, and it's so chemical tasting if there's too much of it. Yeah, yeah. a little is fine. I've been doing mm -hmm. um, like fruit infused water, uh, like okay. strawberries or oranges in the, um, cause when I do the fasting, I can do that. You just, the technicality rule is true. You can have fruit in the water, but you can't grind it up or something like that to be right. technically on your fast or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's just like an essence of strawberry or an essence of orange, but it works pretty good. And I have my own orange trees in the basement that have been there for two years now. And I have one orange. Orange so trees in the basement? <laughs> yeah. I that got, is, okay. How does it I, get sun? Does it need sun, not need sunlight or anything? I have a lot of uh, um, like grow lamps. But oh. then in the in the summertime, I take it out. They go outside. But in the winter, so, so the trees are movable. OK. Yeah, they're on rolling carts. So they go outside during the summer and they come inside during the winter. The. Oh, my dogs are going berserk for some reason. The <laughs> um, the drawback is uh, I, they probably don't produce anywhere near as much right. as like they should. I mean, I get like. I think I've gotten two lemons. <laughs> like okay. In, well, it, you're you know, not getting like stuff with pesticides and all no, that on no. it. So that is good to be able to grow your own food for sure. Yeah. I feel like um, I always will, will say this to people who try to grow fruit in like a cold environment. It's like that one lemon, like here we buy lemons like for a dollar each or 50 cents each. But like that son of a bitch took me like a year to grow. Mm -hmm. I would be, I would be, it would be like Louis the 15th or whatever the hell they call it. Like it would be, I would have to, um, just looking at what my dogs are going berserk at. I have family members here, oh, uh, okay. walking their dogs. People come to my property and, uh -huh. and walk, walk the dogs here all the time, which is fine. Um, the one rule I have is generally don't make my dogs go berserk, especially during right. the live show. <laughs> Like yeah, <laughs> especially during that. Um, sounds like they quieted down. Um, what's okay. going on here? Okay, yeah, everything's good. <laughs> everything's good. So anyway, yeah, I'm always thinking about my fruits and how hard they are to make, and uh, and um, other stuff, vegetables. Like I have a, mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a 
what do you call it? hydroponic garden like lettuce and tomatoes oh. and stuff it grows um from like rise gardens they're like uh-huh unsponsored but that's what it is it's just like basically all these shelving units and then it's like hooked up to your bluetooth you can do it much easier on your own if you put the time in but bluetooth garden technology yeah, <laughs> yeah. it manages like it tells you okay you need to your stuff's overgrown or whatever and you know wow um, I don't want to do the math on what it costs me to grow a head of lettuce, but it does grow well. I'll just well, say that. Well, it's yeah. and that's the thing too is you're ready for the apocalypse if something happens. As hey. long as uh, the power <laughs> doesn't run out, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you need some generators and all I do that. have those. Yeah, okay. I have generators and yeah, I'll be all right. But um, yeah, some some questions right off the bat before we get into the topics. It looks like. Uh, Somebody said, oh, no, maybe not. Usually they go all the way to the top and there's no easy way to to sort them. But right. the um, damn you rumble. Uh, I'll get to those moments. Oh, yeah. Christian Rocker says, do either of you own a butter dish? Drunk 3PO needs to know. Yeah, of course. I, you know what? I actually don't. <laughs> I just Well, that's because you butter. eat it like an apple. I You're do. Not, yeah. I don't. I know. Like my parents, they have a butter dish, but. Yeah. Is this yeah. the topic on drunk three POs thing or something? Cause I saw people tagging me. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, of course I have a butter dish. Um, I don't keep it on butter dishes. I just put it out when like we right. have people over. Mm -hmm. Um, otherwise I just buy the quarter sticks of butter and then just, oh, like yeah. a, you know, I just cut them and leave them in the wrapper in the, in the, mm -hmm. in the fridge. Tim says, Hey guys, I'm just wondering, since Pokemon is going woke, will we be able to catch Triglypuff? <laughs> Probably. <True. laughs> play Pal World anyway. Um, what's up with locals, Jay? Is locals not working? I see locals seems to be working. Um, I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, mm. Bulldozer says, oh, you said right off where's a whistle. Okay, so I got that. And then Bulldozer, almost 200,000 followers, quarter pounders unite. Yes, almost only like 900 away, I think. Great to see oh. Melnick. Didn't get to ask you yesterday, Jeremy, when are you going to get sticks to shill the best coffee on the market? Coffee brand coffee. <laughs> yes, your chocolate espresso beans are awesome. Yeah, we just had to take those off the market because it's that time of year. Too hot to, oh. I, you know, I ship them. Um, oh, there's no video on locals? Oh, weird. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. Freaking locals, man, every time. Uh, so now that we got everything caught up sorry about that on locals i didn't i didn't know and then john mr corner i need to know did you include the crab rave tune in your intro legendary if so my newborn loves the crab rave oh nice i bet you there's like a 10 hour loop of it on youtube somewhere um crab rave i've never heard of that uh, buy melanie a chair fun she doesn't that's why she's fit oh. she doesn't sit in a chair <laughs> yeah. yeah the um <laughs> Yeah, the crab rave is the you know it like um I might. It, gets, it gets flagged now on YouTube when you play it, but like um the, I'm not gonna sing it, but like okay, uh, oh I'm you, sure yeah. you would sing it amazingly though. Yeah, well there are no <laughs> words. It's just like oh, you know, it's like a rave. bunch of crabs dancing around. Oh, I think then, I have seen. I think you, I have seen usually it. seen like memes where like somebody gets fired or canceled yes, or I whatever. have seen that. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I have that. seen that. <laughs> um, did you guys play Stellar Blade demo yet? I have not. Melly, no, have you? I haven't. Like it dropped whenever I was uh my family had like this Easter thing going on and I was spent that weekend over with them. Um, but also like I want to wait and that's how I, I am too. Yep. I don't know if they even pulled the demo or not, but I, I want to wait until the game. I mean, it's not even that long before the game's coming out, so I'm just gonna wait and experience it all fresh yeah Jen, um i wanted to refine my take on you should look at sprung greenhouse vegetable growing project in newfoundland that failed badly oh you know what i'm watching right now a documentary i hope it's real uh -huh. called the called the garden it's on like hulu is promoting it where it's like is the garden a cult or not and it's like i if i look it up and it's like a mockumentary it's going to be such a bummer because the characters on it are so hilarious oh imagine this so you have a guy that looks like AIDS Ed Sheeran, who is okay. like, who started this uh, garden project, which is essentially, you know, uh, like a commune. Mm -hmm. There have been many communes in the past that were, in fact, cults. 
Um, but this one, they, they've been trying to say like, hey, we're not a cult. Come on in and film. And essentially, some guy donated some land. So they always ignore that part because they're living free off the land. Someone oh. paid for this land where they're living. And they're like, um, you know, trying to be self-sustaining. But then there mm -hmm. are people that that in and of itself is fine. Right. Like it's it's cringy and funny, but like, I don't care. But the best part of the show is that people have to like um, audition to be allowed into the community and they have to go there and stay like a week. Mm -hmm. And so far, everyone that's gone there, like there's this one guy who's like 450 pounds and he can barely walk up a hill. Oh. And he's like, I got to do this. I'm going to go. My He's like, leaves his family. He's like, I got to learn how to live off the land when the apocalypse comes. He, <laughs> they, they like drop him off and it's like a quarter mile walk. He uh -huh. freaking gives up before he <gasps> even gets, there's like a big hill. And he's like, man, I'm not going to make it up that hill. And like, <laughs> it's the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen in my life. Like you have to watch it. If like, uh, then they have this other chick who has like huge fake boobs. And I'm like, what uh -huh. are you doing here? But of course she's wow. like starting all sorts of drama. And right. uh, it's, it's like, uh, it's all hilarious. And um, they're, they're like trying to say, they're like, well, the community, they got big on TikTok, I guess. Okay. And so all these TikTokers showed up there. Mm -hmm. And then these TikTokers went home and they're like, it's a cult. Oh, my God. They they ate a cat. And um, <laughs> that's one of the big controversies. Eat a that, cat? Well, if yeah. you're in like one of those survival situations, right. you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. So yeah. essentially, it is true. I'm only on episode two or three. It is true that they did eat a cat. <laughs> However, like... They try, they downplay it. like basically they're LARPing, you know? And so like right. they had this cat allegedly had killed like 15 of their chickens. They just oh, say that probably to justify it. Probably. And they're like, well, we killed it. So we might as well try eating it. And then everyone tried eating it and they all got sick. And like, oh. it was, it's I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing. I would have to be very, very, very starving before I would eat a cat. Yeah. It's, <laughs> the whole thing, the whole concept is incredible. Because the people that go there are like, I, I don't know what you would call them, like rich kids or, or you oh. know, and they're not, this guy's like, oh my God, this week there's a guy coming out. And then this is the last spoiler. He's like, I got a military grade shovel. And all it is, is a folding shovel that you can buy from anywhere. <laughs> and he's like, I got a military grade a shovel. Military. I got my fishing pole and any, and, and this huge fat guy, like walking down, this is the same guy. He's uh -huh. walking down the hill. He's got like a small backpack and a pillow. He brought his own pillow, of course. Of then course. he's got his, his military grade shovel and a and a fishing pole. And I'm like, what in the hell do you think you're doing, dude? You can't even move. Like, what? Wow. Okay, I want to watch this. He left that his four kids at home. That is wife. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Well, he calls his wife, gets out of the taxi cab, uh -huh. immediately calls. He's like, I'm coming home. I can't make it. <laughs> like. <it's> <laughs> This half it's, mile walk was too yeah. much. Yeah. And this wow. guy's like going to live. He's like, I got to learn how to live in a post apocalyptic world. And uh, that, oh my, it's, it's unbelievable um, <laughs> that, that this is even a thing. And then, like, I just started watching it. And I'm like, this is my favorite show on TV because it everybody on there, great. there's some real people in there. Uh -huh. Like, they, you know, there's some people over there, like, they dig a, latrine they put they, like some of the stuff they do is smart right like some of it is smart the community you know um i don't know if you're into people who fake larp who who think like i camped out once and so therefore mm -hmm. you know i could survive uh you know oh wait someone just said yeah 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 i got a fellow garden watcher bro the garden is <laughs> hilarious dude's so big he can't even walk <laughs> everyone is like strung out hippies the one tall, long, blonde-haired guy is the only one worth anything. That's true. He knows what he's doing there. Oh. Um, it's Yeah, the fat guy is unbelievable. Like, nobody around him was like, dude, like, <laughs> you're, you're going to be sleeping on the ground. Like, this guy <laughs> is big enough that, like, you know, I know I couldn't sleep on the ground. Like, right. You're sleeping on the ground. There ain't no heating pads. There's no food. Like there's wow. He took his family out for a lobster dinner. All you get lobster dinner to tell him that he was going <laughs> off to this post-apocalyptic camp. It is. I'm telling you, chat. If you want to watch a show that you like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like 
I like trash TV and I've openly admit that. I've seen every episode of Sister too, Wives. Sometimes. I've seen like 90 watched, Day Fiance. Oh my right. goodness. I trash watched TV. so much of that. Yeah. Yeah. And this guy, like I put it on, you know, it's not like I'm invested in it, but then right. like I watch it. I'm watching the show and I'm like, dude, there's no way. Dude, there's no way. Dude, and it just like never ends. It's like a never ending thing of like incredible, like you can't look away. It, it's it's wow. unbelievable. It's called the, yeah, it's called the garden commune or cult. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's um, it's uh it's unbelievable. I wish um now don't look up if it's like fake or not, because like yeah, we all want to believe that it's yeah. real, so don't yeah. spoil that. <laughs> yeah, the the oh my god yeah oh my god he's so i think big. like the oh. fat guy the thing about being really fat in that type of situation is there's there's a an advantage but also a lot of disadvantages the advantage just falls in hey you can survive without eating for a lot longer True. Uh, but, but then moving around and stuff you even see on what is that uh there's that one everything's where harder when you're like when you're True. big trust me yeah like i this guy look at hold on oh one of these people's this oh guy. look at him he's got a cane like what is he thinking he's like i'm out here wow. i'm gonna i'm a survivalist <laughs> i got a military grade shovel like the whole thing oh, is unbelievable. there's no way if you just yeah. can barely even walk there's no way <laughs> yeah. there's that that one show called alone or whatever that survivalist show yeah, and yeah, yeah, i yeah. know their strategies usually are to get as fluffy as they can like eat a bunch and bulk not nearly to that level but i i've seen one guy who had a strategy of just i'm just gonna fast and sleep <laughs> <laughs> yeah well and uh, if i can sell it further to people don't pay for it i think the episode right. is even on youtube think about watching a, a watching con someone said in chat it's a show about watching communists fail in real time oh like, amazing <laughs> yeah they're all like woke like commies and they're like completely oh by the way they all have 900 hundred dollar iphones too obviously oh, of course obviously. yeah and they all do tiktoks and um it's it's unbelievable. And uh, by the way, just so people know, we'll get into the topics now. I'm joined by Melanie Mack. She is my regular chair two on Tuesdays and Thursdays, or first chair, probably. Zero, actually chair Yay. zero. And uh, <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, her YouTube channel is linked in the description below. If you're watching on Rumble, her channel is also linked, which is now all fixed up and... Uh, all going yes. one now. She just uploaded a brand new video. Journals are melting down over Stellar Blade. Make sure you go check that out. And um, yeah, go subscribe. Obviously, go do that uh, now or after the show. She's got five point seven eight thousand. I think you went up by a thousand or so since the last show. Yeah, nine hundred. I think so. Yeah. So that so that's good. Um, topics. God, I could just talk about the garden all night. So topics. Um, <laughs> Well, what happened was uh, Hulu had like episode one and two, mm -hmm. and then it just jumped to episode five for some reason. And then it said like episode two, three, and four were coming today. So I don't know why oh. they, because all of a sudden it was episode five. I'm like, whoa, 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 like, what Wait happened? a minute. Yeah. Who are these people? <laughs> I missed, I missed something. And then I figured out, oh, they forever uploaded it out of order. So. Okay. We'll mm. Got it. <laughs> um, oh, God. I keep forgetting. <laughs> Let's talk about now. I have this dunking on fake red pillars thing, which I'm going to save to the end because people are going to be, it's going to irritate people. Right. But essentially, there's a story about this guy from Fresh and Fit who their entire show is about how women never take responsibility, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Well, his um, uh, passport wife from China got pregnant. And Ooh. now he's he's crying and begging her to abort it, and so, like she recorded it all. It's are incredible. they actually married or is it just no, just his girlfriend? Just, okay, just his girlfriend. Yeah, gotcha. Um, which which again, obviously, is not funny, but it's also like, bro, what happened to taking responsibility? Mm -hmm. What happened? To, yep. Yeah. What happened to women? Always, you know, with chicks. Am I right? Like what? Like women are always not taking responsibility. Am I right? Which is their whole show concept, you know? Right. 
Um, the uh, so there's that, but I'll I'll save that because that one will annoy some people. It's funny because the the audio and I verified the audio and all the text messages are obviously real. Mm-hmm. All the coping underneath it are either red pillars saying, "Well, he should have got a vasectomy." Okay, <laughs> now, then, now like, it's like both sides are saying this now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, then the other guys are like, oh, that's AI. I'm like, <laughs> okay, AI is like, you know, a thing. All right. Mm-hmm. But it's not AI. There's a million screenshots that go with it. It's just too good of a, it's too good right. of a story. Um, right. so it's uh, push ups of communes never work. I went on tour of a kibbutz in Israel that had been subsidized for seven decades and they still can't figure it out. Yeah, right. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. The dream, man. Communism just hasn't been tried correctly Mm yet. (laughs) um, Let's start with, where is that? I wanted to start, I wanted to start with a more heavy topic. Uh, Mm -hmm. Not that heavy, but one that I thought was pretty interesting and will definitely make for probably a good clip because uh, it's going to piss off all the right people. But what do you make of this study at um it came out today I'll, for people in the chat who don't know um let me give you a, a tldr here most according to a new study which i'll share too i'll go over the actual study most gender confused children grow out of it landmark 15 year study concludes as critics say it shows being trans is usually just a phase for kids Mm-hmm. Thank God parents are level-headed and not having their 15-year-old girls have double yes. mastectomies. Am I right? <laughs> Thank, God. Thank God nobody's out there prescribing these kids uh, gender uh, hormone puberty therapy, blockers, right? Yeah. You know? Thank, Thank goodness God. they're not stopping kids from puberty. And, and even though they're saying it's non-reversible, they still, you can't go through puberty over again at a different age correctly. It's... Yeah. Just thank God, right? Thank goodness yeah. nobody is out there <laughs> doing anything irreversible. Um, so according to this study, it says the majority of gender confused children grow out of it by feeling uh, out of that feeling by the time they are fully grown adults. According to a long term study, researchers in the Netherlands tracked more than three th- or twenty seven hundred student uh, kids, ugh, children from age 11 to their mid 20s, asking them every three years how they felt about gender. Results showed that at the start of the research, around one in 10 children, 11 percent expressed gender non contentedness. To varying degrees shocking you're going mm. through puberty okay that's that, that, that stuff is life. it's so normal it's always been a, it's always been a thing that people just parents just you know didn't think too much of it and then the kid grew out of it even when i was a little kid i remember because i grew up with two brothers so it was like oh i wish i was a boy i used to say that i remember i even said like oh yeah i'm i i'm basically a boy and then my parents right. just laughed about it and then sure enough like that was the extent of you it. grew out of it because <laughs> yeah. that's what people do yeah like <laughs> that well that's when you talk about studies like this it flies directly in the face of this whole like oh 27 percent of 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 teens are lgbtq well yeah if you would have asked if you would have made up a bunch of words for confused puberty phase 20 years ago mm-hmm. a lot of kids would probably have said that too and and what's crazy is that by 25 just four percent said they often or sometimes are discontent about their gender. So not even like, you know, right. not even a hardcore opinion about it. And I mean, again, thank goodness we're not doing any surgeries. We're not, you know, turning any outies into innies. We're make, not making any new weans. Thank God, because this could be a disaster. Am I right? <laughs> That's it's I can't believe we've reached this point in society even because at the very core of it, and it's very controversial to say, but transgender isn't a real thing it's because you can't you can't change your gender no matter what so people who want to they wish that they were the other gender they will never be that no matter what no matter how many surgeries they get no matter how much makeup they put on or if the woman pretending to be a man gets on testosterone and grows a beard they will never actually be the opposite gender and so uh, just to get to this point to where society has been validating them and has turned it into s- something that, oh, this is an actual thing. It's it, it's sad. It's just gotten way out of control. And it, it's only it, recently that 
you won't get absolutely crucified for speaking out against this stuff. Cause I remember just even a couple of years ago, I started mm -hmm. saying stuff and wow, the backlash was insane. <laughs> Yeah, the the funny th oh, it's not funny. The reality of it is only recently and you know a lot of these people who are like yeah. communists and uh, also like big proponents of this kind of stuff, um they're always talking about how Europe's healthcare system is so amazing. Well, curiously, Europe has stopped allowing minors to do these type of surgeries and sure, it's just one study, okay? That's what people will say, but it also reinforces the reality that everybody already knew. Like yes. when I was young, like, I mean, I can't say I was ever gender confused, but like, whatever, like you have like different ages, age groups. I know it, I, I think it definitely affects women more, but I, I right. that could just be, I could just be com completely off on that. But like, I knew a lot more tomboys than guys that were mm -hmm. acting feminine. I'll put it yeah. that way. Um, That's true. But Maybe that's a Midwest thing. I don't know, but it's like for it. It's I've been saying forever. Like, look, yes, there are gender non. There are people who have gender dysphoria. It's a real <laughs> thing. Um, however, it's not this twenty five percent or twenty percent, ten percent. It's not even five percent. It's you know, it's not even one percent. And all these people are going out there because there's a financial incentive, i.e., Dylan Mulvaney to uh promote this stuff or jeffrey marsh whatever that weirdo's name is um or you know or the way that hollywood fetishizes the lgbtq community mm -hmm. because they're all demonic the yep. um you know there's there's a monetary benefit to um signing up to this religion there is a uh a public benefit there is clout there is public affirmation positive affirmation for i mean <laughs> It wasn't that long ago that people were literally stunning and brave for coming out as gay. Now it's like, who cares? Yep. You're gay? Big whoop. What else are you? <laughs> they got to take know, like... it a step further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so, yeah, one yeah, thing but... that really puts a, a lot of this into perspective too and how they want to, and shows just how overblown a lot of it is, is that just like you said, for the most part, I've experienced the same. There's been more tomboys, like girls who um, like boy hobbies or whatever are more on the tomboyish side than feminine boys but yet if you look at the actual tr transgender ratios and people who identify as transgender you find way more men pretending to be women than women pretending to be men and so i True. think that oh if this is some just if it's all just a mental thing well the, and and if this thing with the kids if they want to make that valid then it would be the other way around so uh Fair point. Yeah. yeah that's a good point the i i think that I really think that we're going to look back at this phase in, in, in history, 2020 mm -hmm. to 2030, or actually really 2015 to 2025 kind of as this weird wild era yeah. that this is going to self-correct because one of the things I've also talked about for a very long time is that every, every time I see this stuff, this, um, you know, oh, uh, trans stuff, I think, mm -hmm my mind goes directly to those daytime commercials where they're like, uh, um, have you ever, do you have lead paint in your house? Well, that, I didn't know <laughs> that, but like where they're like, a, Hey, you may be entitled to a cash settlement. If you mm -hmm. do that, that's the TV commercials that are going to be running. Did, did some doctor talk you into double mastectomy at 15 years old? You may be entitled yep. uh, to, to, you know, what's her name? Chloe. Um, she called in on the Disney investor call yesterday. She's a detransitioner. Mm -hmm. And, uh, same thing, right? Like, she's like, I'm suing all these people. It's yeah. like, yeah, because normally I say, well, you made your own decision, but mm -hmm. these people, these kids are exposed to this, pushed into this. Yep. Then the doctors, you know what the, you, what the doctors tell the parents, right? They say, well, if you don't, would you rather have a trans kid or a dead kid? Exactly. That's what they say. Yes. What are parents supposed to do? Yep. So, yeah. so they say, yeah, well, okay, well, let's do the surgery or let's do, let's put them on hormone blockers or whatever, because I, 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 I totally understand why parents feel like, oh my God, what if I trust this doctor? Um, mm -hmm. you know, my family doctor, I'm supposed to, you know, and he's telling me that if I don't do this, then I'm going to lose my kid. So yeah. they do it, they get pushed into it, even though there's no like general consensus on whether or not these puberty block hormone blockers or surgeries 
mm-hmm. actually do diddly dick in terms of changing exactly. the outcome for this community. In fact, the percentages are very shocking after people do get these surgeries. The Reddit stories of, oh my God, the I got the mm-hmm. surgery and now I'm, you know, I smell like a sewer all the time. And yes. I don't know, <laughs> like how yes. many more people are there like that? And and they're gonna, these people are gonna start suing. And what's gonna happen is somebody's gonna win big. Someone's gonna win 500 million or whatever from one of these gender surgery uh, places. And they're all gonna go out of business. Like they're just- That's, yep. I'm ready for that because I'm sick of seeing this and especially with children because they're, and and that's the thing is, is even trying to speak on this stuff. And even when Matt Walsh started yeah. talking more about it, people are, are, they always move the goalposts. Like they always will say, oh, wait, but no, they're not doing surgeries on children. And then it's like, you can, you could actually Google the hospitals that were doing it. Like There's girls like- <laughs> as young as 11 with parental consent. There's, and, and even even with the uh, the boys trying to be girls and having like that bottom surgery and stuff, they have been doing that with parental consent for for kids. And I think that the What is a Woman uh, documentary and all that kind of stuff really did help bring a lot of awareness. And then some of these hospitals like took that stuff off their websites. I, every they time they got there. exposed. Yep. Isn't that funny? Every time Libs of TikTok tweeted about some university who was doing this, they took it off their website. Yep. I mean- if you weren't doing anything wrong, why are you trying to hide mm-hmm. it? It's such a, I get like, that's a fallacy, right? It's like, why do you have a lawyer? Are you guilty? But I mean, come on. People are like, hey, you're doing these surgeries on 11 year olds. That's curious. And yeah. suddenly they're like, oh no, we well, just took it off our website. We're not doing that. What are you talking about? We never did that. Uh, even though there's testimonials and all this kind of stuff out there. Yeah, so that's, I think that's, that's interesting. I, I want people to watch this over the next 10 years and and I suspect we're going to see I suspect we're going to see a major shift in right. the number of times that people are getting these elective surgeries. I just I, I don't believe that it's going to be like it is now. Someone's getting sued for sure. Yeah. And I think as a society, we have to stop encouraging things that are harming people. It doesn't matter that uh, they they might be struggling with it. it might be a mental thing. It doesn't mean that we have to encourage it. Same with like anorexia or something. They are actually mentally going through stuff and feeling like, oh man, I'm fat, even if they're 80 pounds. Um, but it's the right thing to tell them that they need to get better. And that's the same thing with, with people who identify as transgender is they're going to go down a long, hard road if they keep getting validated and keep getting surgeries and keep putting chemicals in their bodies and hormones in their bodies, unnatural hormones levels that their body and, and unnatural synthetic hormones as well. They're only hurting themselves. There is not a case. There's not a singular case where you will see, oh, here's somebody that thought they were the opposite gender. They got the surgeries. They got the hormones and they are healthier for it. They're, I, I, I can't see that there would be a single case that that would even be an outcome. I think you make a great point because imagine if somebody who also has a legitimate mental disorder, right? So uh, gender dysmorphia, just like body dysmorphia and Mm -hmm. some kind of anorexia. So in any other mental illness, yeah, I'm not, it's just the truth. I'm not saying it from a negative perspective. Imagine if with anorexics, we said it's actually good to, to tell them to starve themselves, right? Because it affirms them. Or, or you're bulimic, then we should encourage them to 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 vomit because right. that affirms them. There is another, there's not another single mental disorder that I can think of that is treated in this way. And for me, it's mostly obvious because there is an, uh, this is a, f- uh, a, f- a financial yeah. mega, you know, you get people on pills and prescriptions for the rest of their life. Yep. You, it's a lifetime customer. It's insane. It's evil. I think a, a a lot of it is demonic as well. <laughs> like honestly, yes, yeah. it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of uh, the only way to to explain it. I think mm-hmm. um, you know. By the way, I want to mention everybody who's out in chat or uh, out just enjoying the stream. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I am joined by Melanie Mack, who is well, obviously with me right now. I don't know why it's not showing up. Oh, that's full stream layout. Why is that not showing? I'm <laughs> dumb. Oh, wait, there we go. Um, All right. This is her Rumble channel. It's linked in the description. If you're one of the 4,000 or so people watching on Rumble, give her a follow on Rumble. Or if you're watching it later, 
If you're on YouTube, if you're one of the thousand or so on YouTube, make sure you're following her on YouTube. She's got Melanie, uh, her ch channel's linked in the description. She's obviously got her Melanie Matt Go Boom channel. She's got her Bible channel. Uh, she's got her Twitter, which was linked below as well. Um, so make sure you give her a follow, show her some love. If you're on YouTube or um, if you're on YouTube or Rumble, consider joining as a member today. It uh, helps uh, support the channel. It's five bucks a month, I think, and it goes directly to well to me. But Melanie does get paid on this channel. In <laughs> she gets paid in exposed. Just she does get paid. Um, so <laughs> it does help. It helps. That. I try to delineate that to people because, like, I don't right. want like, to go to that road. But not everybody is not everybody pays for people's time, and I think that and that isn't this isn't talking about in particular. But um, I don't pay an exposure. I pay in cash. But the um, the next topic I wanted to talk about um, is, you know, I thought it was pretty interesting. This come, where was it? So Bob Iger comes out yesterday mm -hmm. and he's like, uh, hey, oh my God. Uh, well, first of all, you know, they got rid of, they rejected Nelson Peltz or whatever the guy was trying to get on the board. They were trying, and, and then the stock went down a lot. And then I think today it was basically even. I didn't see where it ended the day, but it was basically even. Um, but he said, oh, well, we're not going to do any more woke stuff. We're not going to do any more um, stuff that spreads the message. Except then two hours later, they announced that Silver Surfer yes. whoops, is a woman. You know, like, I don't, I don't understand... Where is this Hollywood Reporter? Oh no! Well, anyways, I don't have the link, but Silver Surfer is a woman. Now, to be fair, yes, it's some obscure Silver Surfer character that was in like four comics or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's funny to watch everyone flood to Twitter who are like, "Oh, I've always been a fan of this character," and they all use the same picture from her <laughs> wiki page. You know, like yeah, <laughs> like the the um like. Oh yeah, I've I've long been a fan of this character, female uh, Silver Surfer. Oh, what's her name? Oh, I don't know. Um, girls, mm -hmm. female. Su Why? What are you doing? Like, and and the the cope and seethe from the media who are like, well, actually, bigots. They might still have a male Silver Surfer. Okay, cool. Then why did the Hollywood Reporter? Oh no, you're frozen for me. I'm here. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can't. It, it's got stuck for whatever. Yeah, Sometimes a lot of these that. people who pretend like that, I think really it's the numbers that show that that's not always the case. People want to virtue signal and pretend like this, that, and the other. But then when you see these properties that come out with those like diversity casts and all that, that oh well, maybe they appeared in a couple issues or whatever. Um, those issues don't always do that great or. Their adaptations that they make on Disney Plus or what what have you don't do well. Yeah, so, well, of course they don't, because no one yeah. knows who the hell they are. And yeah, like, like Ironheart and all that, how her <laughs> comics, this, that, and the, they just don't sell well. Well, and that's the that's the funniest part about it is like, well, Captain Marvel got her own movie, even though she had been her comic book series had been canceled like half a dozen times. Mm -hmm. The and I, again, I have nothing against Captain Marvel. But when you put Captain, well, I do have, I mean, I have a, <laughs> nothing against a character in and of itself. It, Captain Marvel wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, uh, it was for chicks or whatever, girls, teenage girls. Mm -hmm. But like, even when I look at that movie and it's like, okay, I see what you're doing. You're like, oh, we're going to have a black girl and a brown girl together in a movie. Money, please. Well, it doesn't work that way. Like nobody yep. knows who that. And by the way, I think that Miss Marvel is like a, totally like a cute little like ya character that teen girl like can yeah. probably you know t nothing wrong with that character she's not inherently woke or any of that kind of crap but you can't just put her in a movie and then be like brown people give me your money <laughs> like indians are like you know one sixth of the world's population mm -hmm. they, and our muslims are like one fourth of the world's population or something like that they didn't go see it yep but Disney said, oh, well, we need a Muslim. We need to have, we need to make sure we show a Muslim in a movie who's playing or who's praying. And then, you know, by the way, they never did that with a Christian, but they, you know, mm -hmm. they, they got to have a Muslim in the movie and give me money. Well, where they didn't come, they didn't come to the movie. Where are all the black women that needed to see Monica Rambeau? 
Yeah. <laughs> photon. They didn't come. So I, I don't know how you look at that and you're like, well, the fantastic, fantastic four is three quarters men. We need to make it 50, <laughs> 50 men. And, and, uh, and by the way, again, like I always say, just like, I've always been very clear, just like, uh, ever since the, um, Monica, no, Kelly Marie Tran, uh, stuff, not this chick's fault. She just mm -hmm. took a job. People yeah. shouldn't be shitting on her online or sending her hate mail. That's stupid, cringe, dumb. She just took a job. It's not her fault. Exactly. I'm, I'm really confused about the direction with this next Fantastic Four because uh, it's like they want to go woke with things, but then they also... With the cast, the main cast, I expected, oh, okay, they're going to make Sue Storm ugly oh, as yeah, they yeah. do, but they they actually she's cast it well with her. Yeah. They've got Vanessa Kirby, who I think she's pretty, and but then all the dudes are ugly. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, wait, did they do a reverse Uno? Like, but then now they're, they're, the, this female silver surfer thing is odd. It's like a discombobulation of, okay, we're going to do woke stuff, but then we're going to surprise people with this and that. And it's, I don't know what they're thinking. <laughs> it's so for me, and, and I know fantastic four fans will probably get butthurt about this and you have every right to, I don't care about the fantastic four. I always mm -hmm. thought they were like cringe B tier, but like, I like the thing, right? The thing is in the fantastic four, right? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, is the thing. Yeah. I liked him, but like, I never, I don't know what it was when I was young. It was like, we had the X-Men. I mean, I, well, you were this, I mean, I won't date you, but you were around the same age as me yeah. when X-Men, <laughs> X-Men 97 came out. Like that's the cartoon I was watching. I wasn't watching like Fantastic Four. Like, um, it was not like, Ooh, flame on. Like, I, I don't, yeah. that, that stuff didn't work for me. So I don't think this movie's going to do that great. Fantastic Four never really got any good adaptations like that good. I think that the didn't one with Justin... Michael Chiklis, didn't Michael Chiklis play the thing in one of the movies? Am I remembering that I right? I don't remember. I don't even Help know who that out, is. Chat. But I know that the one the with, commish. the <laughs> one with Jessica Alba, Sue Storm was my favorite, but it wasn't even that great. That uh, movie I, flopped hard yeah, too. Yeah, it was. Was yeah. it? My dad is a huge Fantastic Four fan. That was his favorite of the comics. Like he grew up reading the comics and I feel bad for him because there hasn't been any actual good adaptations. The last one. <laughs> yeah. I think only one came out like in the modern era that, okay. Yes, it was Michael Chiklis. By the way, shout out low key. Love the commission. What used to watch with my dad all the time when I was young, but uh, low key. Test um steroid Michael Chiklis in The Shield is an awesome show. Also stars who one of my all-time favorite actors. Um, the guy who um oh my god, he played Justify, he's in Justified. Um, his dad was an actor. What is his name? Um, oh my god. Uh hold please. <laughs> uh why is that he's not in the top billing? Walter Goggins. Um oh. So Walter Goggins is in the shield. He kills it. Then he goes on to the just on, on to justified kills that. Then he goes on to side note, holiday suggestion film to put in your back pocket, everybody, or that little pocket that's in the top pocket of your jeans <laughs> is a uh, fat man. Fat it man. Is, I don't know if it has to be Christmas to enjoy it, but it is on my Christmas watch list every year. It is Mel I Gibson. I've never heard of it. It's so good. I'm telling you, like, it's like dark comedy ish. <gasps> I love that. I love dark yeah. comedy. Okay. Give it a, you don't have to watch it on Christmas. And then you tell me if you think. Okay. I put it on my Christmas watch list because it's like um, Walter Goggins is a, is a, a, a paid assassin. Uh -huh. And there are like dark aspects of the movie. Like, he does kill people. Uh -huh. But like some rich kid hires him to get, get Santa because can't, Santa gave him uh, coal. And, uh -huh. in, and so in this universe, Santa is real. And, okay. uh, and so he's a real figure who's played by Mel Gibson. Uh, and it's just, it's great. If anybody in chat can back, right. back me up, the little kids, like little Ben Shapiro, he's like uh -huh. a rich kid. And like, it, it's just, 
I think it's good. The ending's a little weird, but I thought like Santa can't make enough money, so he takes a defense contract from the it's it's <laughs> like it sounds ridiculous, but if you watch it, like Walter okay. Goggins absolutely murders it. There, chat says he 100 percent great. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, oh, it's, it's really so... good. Okay, I'll watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he was also good in Vice Principals too. Yeah, that's true. Walter Goggins. I, I, it is on my 100% Fat Man is Dope. Yeah. It's on my every, it came out like two years ago. It's not like some mm -hmm. old relic. Okay. And it is my, is on my Christmas list. Do you have a Christmas watch list that you watch like uh, every Christmas? You should. I garbage. usually, yeah, I watch like those old claymations, like the, the Rudolph yeah, yeah. the Red Nosed Reindeer one. And yeah. The, the Bumble Bounces. Snowman. Yeah. yeah. You don't have like, I mean, you don't watch like the elf at Christmas or uh, not every year. No, just those claymation ones every year. And then other than that, than that, it's like, okay, elf is good. I do really like that. Um, Batman's Nightmare. on my list. I like, no, oh yeah, Christmas, Batman like Returns. That? I watched that. Yeah. yeah Nightmare Returns, Before Christmas yeah. on Christmas or Halloween. It works for both. Yep. <laughs> yep. That works for both. I do. Um. Every Christmas I do, obviously, National Lampoons. That's multiple times. Or Christmas uh -huh. Vacation. That's okay. Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, day after Christmas. A couple of times I'm watching that. Um, the first Santa Claus starring Tim mm -hmm. Allen. Great okay, family-friendly. Great message. Great movie. Um, the Here's a new one. for, and then, I don't know why I'm talking about Christmas. But I will <laughs> say this. New, newly to my list in two years ago was Fat Man that added to the list. And then uh -huh. a movie called, and if you haven't seen this, you should watch it, Mac, is uh, 8 Bit Christmas. 8 Bit Christmas? Imagine what is the movie? You're shooting your eye out with that thing. That's, um, oh, uh, not, um, the Christmas story. Yeah, yeah. So imagine if the Red Rider BB gun in a Christmas uh -huh. story was a Nintendo Entertainment System. And oh. all, all of the memes of like when you were young and everyone wanted a Nintendo uh -huh. and like the one rich kid on the block had a Nintendo, like that's the movie and it's great. Like it's, okay. it's also super family friendly, super like wholesome and uh, it takes place in the Midwest. So it's a little extra close to me, but yeah, that I'll give you two Christmas movies for you to remember. You don't have to wait till Christmas to watch Bad Santa. But okay. Apex Christmas hits better on Christmas because it's all about this gotcha. kid. Like he joins the Boy Scouts and sells Rees to try and win a Nintendo, which is like totally uh -huh. what we did when when I was young. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, Dasbox says the ref with Dennis Lee, that's very good. And Kevin Spacey from the 90s is a great underrated, underrated Christmas movie. That's true. That is. Cocktail okay. says Walter Goggins is the best and vice principals. IMO, so good. Big agree. Matt Hammond said... Melanie looked at making a shirt, call it flag and flagrantly attacking grumptious gamers over tragicness. Oh, haha, I get it. It's an acronym. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah, we go. Yeah. There's the plan. <laughs> yeah, I think they'd pick up on that. Elijah <laughs> Fire for 17. Jeez, thank you. Thank God for you guys. Keep fighting the good fight. Well, thank you for you, dude. That's very kind. Um, Next topic I wanted to talk about uh, was, well, hold on. We talked about Bob Iger. We talked, let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. The You sent me a topic too. Let me bring up that tweet. Yeah, Grums mm -hmm. made a tweet about this. At, uh, this that IG in France dude Yeah, just well, had a the, giant meltdown about yeah. <laughs> this game is literally going to kill women. <laughs> women are going to die. <laughs> Yeah, the 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 this this part of the story is is insane. So for 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 those of you who are, you know, for those of you watching at home, Stellar Blade is a video game that is we don't even know how good or bad it is. At, at best we can assume right. it's above average uh -huh. based on some early gameplay. IGN France had a absolute meltdown about it saying Oh, the woman in this video game isn't even based on it's like an incels fantasy about what women look like. They printed this and turns out it's a one to one body scan of an actual woman. Mm -hmm. And um, the art designer on the game is another woman, 
Um, so essentially, one of the dude's wives, yeah, and she's a really beautiful woman, and she, yeah, she's character designer. Yeah, character designer, beautiful woman, one to one scan. Essentially, not an incel drawing uh, Tiggle biddies because he's never seen a real woman, which is essentially what IGN France said. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to I don't know what a couple days later, a day or two later, um, and essentially IGN Papa IGN. IGN yeah. International tell says, ah, nah, dude, here's what probably happened. Will you tell me what you think, Mel? Mm -hmm. uh, is it Step Up Games? Who, um, Step Up whoever, Games, yeah. Yeah, Step Up Games produces the game. It's really the only big PlayStation game this year. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's the biggest PlayStation 5 game in a long time. And by the way, pl Sony PlayStation has not had, other than Final Fantasy, a single console selling game that I can think of. Right. I think I don't know what the real numbers are or the numbers of people that actually turn their PS5s on every day as a PS5 owner. Okay, I'm yeah. not I'm not a I'm a PC gamer. I'm not I don't do the console war thing. Just get whatever you like. <laughs> um, but this is a really important title for Sony. So I think Sony step up games or whatever was like, yo, no. Yep. Do you want another exclusive? Because that's how it works, right? Do, mm -hmm. do you want another exclusive? Do you want early access to our DLC? Do you want any PlayStation love ever again? Okay, well, you got to fix this. I assume <laughs> that's what they did. Probably. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's how that stuff. I mean, that's that's um that's how that stuff works. Like, I I, I don't know. You know, it's access journalism. IGN. The only reason that these sites exist, IGN, Kotaku, so on. Is because they get early access and it's a quid pro quo yep. agreement where I mean for forever, it's like, well, don't say our games are terrible and we'll give mm -hmm. you early access, which means you're gonna be the only place with gameplay footage two two months before it comes out. You're gonna be the only place that has a playthrough. You're the only place that's the trade. You give us positive press, wink, wink, wink. Mm -hmm. We'll give you early access, wink, wink, wink. That's why IGN exists. That's why Kotaku exists. And That's I think it's exists. only a matter of time before even IGN. I'd be surprised if IGN can still maintain for a very long time because there's just not so much a need for these journalist outlets anymore. First of all, because these websites are hiring activists over actual, you know, people who are gamers and who want to work in this industry. Uh, and so you have that, you have them inserting their ideologies and all of that, instead of just talking about games and having a passion for the games themselves. And then with what you just mentioned and everything with, okay, wink, wink, give us a good review here. Um, then it's just shady. It's not authentic. And when, whenever you have access to a bunch of streamers and content creators who are genuinely super fans of this stuff, because you can find any niche anywhere like on youtube and all that of oh wow okay wait this guy is the mmo expert so when it comes to mmos i'm gonna go to his channel or this that or the other so why would you want to read something from ign that just hires a bunch of activists when you can hop on youtube and find a super fan who will give their genuine opinions um so right now it's like okay they have a, a little bit of an advantage there with having access and and Mm -hmm. all of that because of how that goes but even so people are willing to wait for an authentic review critical drinker he does his movie reviews later than a lot of people yeah he doesn't put still... him on a week ahead like jeremy yawns yeah. i don't think jeremy yawns or johns i don't think he's a shill but he gets in early he's in the industry i wait for drinker mm -hmm. yep. um there was a time when I trusted Angry Joe and I would be like, I'm not going to pre the game until I hear from Angry Joe. And those days right. are gone. Yeah. But there are other, there are other video game reviewers that like I trust. And, mm -hmm. and the, you're hundred percent right. I have no clue why IGN, how IGN even exists. Yep. When you look at places like Kotaku, they have like seven staff. They, they have nobody. Mm -hmm. And a YouTuber can fire up a webcam and get way more views and way yeah. more um, good, good nature. And, and the thing is, like, when you're a content creator, for example, like, like we both co are more commentators for the mm -hmm. for the most part, right? And you know, but people know that we're authentic. And mm -hmm. so, if this was an IGN stream, they couldn't go, "Hey guys, if you yeah. like what we're doing, please join as a member. It's five dollars a month." And people would laugh at IGN, but yep. like YouTubers, content creators, they can do that, and they can build 
a model to where they can sustain themselves. Here you have IGN editor in chief, by the way, this is like top banana at this company. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, look at all the companies. Giant Bomb went belly up. Escapist oh, is yeah. basically belly up. There's no way Kotaku makes it through 2024. I guarantee they won't. it'll be sold There's off. There's no way. Yeah, yeah, no way. Vice went belly up. I mean, mm -hmm. the so this is the IGN editor in chief, loosely translated. Yes, talking about Stellar Blade uh, in a. So they said this in. I don't know if this was in the comment section. Or yeah, it looks like a forum is, post or yeah, it looks like a forum post. It might mm -hmm. actually be reset era because it's got that purple arrow, which would make mm -hmm. sense, but it might be in the IGM, IGN one. So this is what the editor in chief said about a beautiful woman and how it affects women. <laughs> yes, no problem. Go tell to the women who are hit, <laughs> killed, denigrated, who end their own lives because they cannot live up to the fictional standards expected by men it's like can you can you just tell us one case that this happened give me one example just one yeah, <laughs> yeah. and can they even define what a woman is and they, yeah. like okay maybe you know by the way you know who uses filters that create un uh mm -hmm. unrealistic standards that's women Not yes. that, you know, like, it's true women, want, women use them women uh, consume them you know all this kind of stuff oh yeah um so then the problem is not sexy design itself, except for it sucks compared to others. But hey, that doesn't matter. But the percentage of males who will only want this type of fictional body in reality. Obviously, we understand that this does not shock people. Well, <laughs> that makes you know, no sense, too, because like anybody who touches grass knows the difference so if there were any of these guys who were like wait a minute no i'm gonna pass on this real yeah. woman i don't want jessica alba she doesn't look like this character <laughs> like those are usually the 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 basement dwellers anyway they're not gonna be it's not a loss for anybody if a, yeah it, even then i think that's probably super rare that's it this, happens this just it happens a, yeah yeah the, it's somebody <laughs> it's like saying you can't quit you can't fire me i quit like you were never competing for that chick in the first place. Right. And like the the idea that like, um, you know, is that, I don't know if this is a man or a woman. Do you know? He's if a man. A, oh That's my what's God. crazy. It's like it's a man saying all this stuff, and and okay, you're gonna speak on this issue for women. Can you let? Can you just look and see how girls who play video games, how we like playing as beautiful female characters? This comes across <laughs> as like, I hope she sees this, bro. It does. Like, what is this? And like, um, yeah, like it's literally, I mean, the game is literally killing people. And <laughs> it's so crazy that in the in the in 2000 and current year, we're still having this argument. And 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 what's even more crazy is that this is a real woman. It's a I know. real woman. <laughs> <laughs> and and not only that, but when you look at the character model, you know, used to they would argue about stuff like, oh, but if a woman tried to look like that, she would have to starve herself and all this stuff. They yeah. made her like have a healthy amount of body fat on her. She's, you know, especially her, her thighs and butt, like she's a little thick. So she isn't even pushing an unhealthy standard or anything like that. But also That's stylized is fun. It's yeah. when they're super thin and they have a huge chest. I know that that is unrealistic. Like, right. As like that, you can make the argument. Yes, there are very few that exist. There are some that exist, mm -hmm. but like generally, if you're going to be curvy, you're going to be curvy. And mm -hmm. like this character is curvy. She is thick, yep. a little with three C's, maybe, maybe just two. But like <laughs> the, the idea that like, who is this for bro? Like, and then he's like, uh, and then he continues, um, not necessarily a specific designer or the game director. This is obvious to anyone who knows a little French. Only has the impact because a good portion of gamers have become too fragile <laughs> to due to being fed the patriarchy. <laughs> is this 2014? I swear. It's like, oh, uh, there is not much more beta than a dude speaking out against the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Somebody, somebody in chat said Pam Anderson in the nineties. No, because those are fake. Right. I'm talking exactly. about, yeah, Pam Anderson 
was had had fake. She's what famously had implants. You could make the argument if you really want to, like Dolly Parton. You could mm-hmm. that that'd be like a example of somebody who is very top heavy, but also not very curvy. But mm-hmm. the the <laughs> Dolly Parton. There's probably a newer example out there, but I'm old. Um, <laughs> so like the the idea that this game continues to be like. I don't understand why, like, I get, I get, I guess if I'm Stellar Blade, Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, 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 keep talking about it. The game doesn't come out for another three weeks. They're going to have to keep this outrage cooking. I know, because it's doing nothing about helping the game. But what I really like about it is that the creator wanted to make a game that's fun. And he even said, hey, I want gamers to look at this as a fun action game. And not as just, he, he even mentioned how, oh, in a lot of West, Western entertainment, they're so focused on diversity and this, that, and the other, and inserting issues into their games. And and the way that he said it was yeah. just, this is a video game. Uh-huh. This is supposed I can to only be fun. buy it so hard, man. <laughs> Come on. Like, stop digging. You've struck oil. Like, that's- <laughs> That's and then the there's thing. also there's going to be out there's like a new game plus and there's going to be unlockable outfits and stuff just like old classic games where it's just like you don't have to buy like no microtransactions you don't have to buy all this stuff it's just all available in the game for you to unlock that's Amazing. crazy <laughs> yeah i actually think that's bad business they should sell it like if you're gonna have if you're gonna have like the dgen outfit you should charge five dollars for it i just think that's <laughs> That's good business. They could. Like, they could. But I, mean, I, I do love the focus on bringing games back to how they used to be. I mean, these are games. They have stylish art styles, attractive characters. They're an escape from the real world. And uh, this is a good sign. If we see a lot more games taking notes from Stellar Blade, then, hey, Maybe I can take some time away from my retro gaming and actually play more new games. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to give a shout out here to Disco Cobra. Yeah, I'm looking at Drinker, John's for movies mostly, and Skill Up. Other than Skill Up's a kind of a crazy leftist, but he's still reliable in terms of game video game reviews or other reputable people for games. I even look at music reviewers sometimes. Oh, don't listen to um, the uh, needle drop. Uh, I dabble a bit in music and movie reviews myself just for something to do. I make reaction and replies content. I Ooh. replace content. Check out Disco Cobra. Thank you for the very generous um, contribution. That- That's something I never thought of is looking up people for music reviews. Like if you could find someone with the same yeah. music taste that you have, you could find a lot of new songs that way. What's I, I always tell people the story about uh, Pandora. Like a lot of people... They don't, uh, I, I am, I think in the first 1000 registered users of Pandora, I've been using it Wow! since it came out. I used I to love, use it. Well, my thing is like, so I like, um, indie music, uh, uh-huh. indie rock music. And uh-huh. so it's extremely difficult unless you like hang out. Like when I was, when I was 15, 16, I was in a band until I was like 21 and then everyone I hung out with played and listened to music. It was easy to get recommendations. It was easy to get. So mm-hmm. I went off to college and I was like, well, I don't even know how do I find new music? I don't even know anybody here. Yeah. So I signed up for Pandora and because it had a recommendation engine at the time. And so many of my favorite bands now were re- for were recommended algorithmically in that manner. But yeah, if there was a music reviewer, if they're like, oh, I like these are my top five favorite bands. You got to check out these records. Like I would watch their, I would watch your stuff mm-hmm. for sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. My, my family member was like, remember how earlier I was like the the dogs. Yeah. I just got a text (laughs) message and said, I know dot, dot, dot. Sorry. He must be watching the stream. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and then, um, Oh, disco Cobra also said, I'm not worried about this stuff. I know in due time, the pendulum will swim back and it's starting to swing back in the other direction. Full culture will die, but only with the counterculture taking its place. Yeah, you have to have something mm-hmm. to take its place. That that is a hundred percent true. And by the way, thank you so much. Um, you know, I thought my whole shtick of like saying, "Hey, people will join as a member," that would like get a bunch of people to join as members, and I totally struck out. The um, <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can now join as a member on the YouTube page. Uh, Singra the Beast says, "Wokesters, women are strong and empowered." Also, Wokesters, women have 
a mental breakdown or end themselves because they can't live up to the beauty right. of a sexy video game character. That's Isn't it good? Yeah, and it's and and also people who unalive themselves, it's it's way more men than women dramatically. So why is this all yeah. yeah, why is this why is this even a topic of discussion? I mean, that's a giant reach because women don't unalive themselves that commonly at all, but especially for something like that. You know what yeah. I think is um what I find very there's a couple more of these I want to read and then we'll get to the next topic, but there there are uh I find it always funny when people gaslight Disco Cobra just gifted oh, 10 members. <laughs> yeah, Disco, you don't have you're out carrying the load. You don't have to you have to do all that. Oh uh, thank you. Um is uh when it, do you ever notice I'm gonna give everyone a lesson in fighting back against um gaslighting because i didn't know how to do this when i was young and when i was like early on in kind of covering games and having an opinion online and melanie you probably experienced this too mm -hmm. where people are like you know they say something like uh why do you care about us making the women ugly in some fictional arc video game or mm -hmm. why do you care about um diversity in a space opera like star wars or something like that mm -hmm. and it's meant to like make you feel like you are overreacting um or that you that you're that you're like upset about something that doesn't matter but then once you realize that the best medicine for when people do that is just to throw that exact same thing yep. back like what do you mean it doesn't matter okay if it doesn't matter why do they gender swap silver server if it doesn't yep. matter if it doesn't matter and then mm -hmm. they're just like uh, uh, they, they can't like, <laughs> shut down also yeah. they they're not afraid to completely change their narrative later too because what? these same people were hating on 2b from near automata they were hating on bayonetta well now even in the ig and apology thing you can see or that or that that french journalist yeah, yeah. there he was saying oh but with 2b it's okay because she was model she was inspired by cosplayers yeah, she inspired like, cosplayers, so it's okay. You don't think like, there's going to be cosplayers for Eve? I know. How does it make sense? I don't get it. Oh, but we can complain about this one, but not that one. Because the other one was modeled because of cosplayers. And then Bayonetta is iconic. Well, who's to say Eve won't be iconic? Or True, that there I'm, won't be Eve cosplayers? <laughs> the number one cosplayer to... The number one video game character that will be cosplayed to OnlyFans pipeline is going to be Eve. Right. Mark my words. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like what's the one chick that the prolific cosplayer, Nick, Nick, um, Jen, Jennifer, whatever her name is like, I guarantee you all oh, the Jessica big kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. all the, all the <laughs> voluptuous cosplayers. You think they're going, you think they're not going to be cosplaying as Eve? Get out of here. Like, they of will. course they are. Yeah. Um, Sarah CN says, you are totally correct. Melanie, myself and other girl gamers. I know we like having attractive avatars in games. With high customization, we always make them hot. LOL. Yeah, we do. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I generally to be to be like when I, I actually don't give a shit about uh -huh. all the customization. I don't spend a lot of time on it. Like I know some people will spend like I four do. hours. Yeah, I will. I put a lot of time <laughs> into it. I I'm like, oh, do they have a beard option? <laughs> okay, I'm like obviously six pack, make it just like me, and then I'm like into the game. I don't spend a lot of time on it. Singer of the Beast says, oh, I hit that one. Um, Menace says, what about Unreal Beauty Santas? For me, have you all seen Dante without a shirt? I can't compete with that. For real. But I know. Well, please don't end your life. You know, just, Yeah, you know. stay with us. <laughs> yeah, stay with us. Yeah. <laughs> Lord of the Reese says, shout out to my buddy Sand King 0077. He's been doing gaming streams daily on Rumble for a few months now. He's getting consistently between three and 400 viewers. Nice. And he'll be live after the show ends. Nice slide, nice slide recommendation, Lord of the Re. I support that. I always support a good grift, and you paid the correct price for me to mention it. Um, the uh, oh yeah, I think I got all those. I think oh Dasbach. Oh no, I got that. Um, Bill Dozer says <laughs> Tig old biddies. Um, okay. Lord of the Re says every Christmas one of the things I watch is the X Files Christmas episode where a ghost couple messes with Mulder and Scully. That is a good one. Um, Menace also says, I got a lot of customers at GS that come in just to get a PS5 for Helldivers too. Oh yeah, Helldivers is PS exclusive too, right? Oh, I thought it was on PC too. PC though. or PC or okay. PS5. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Gotcha. PC or PS5, yeah. Okay. 
Matt Hammond said, uh, didn't IGN recently unionize? Yes, they did. Uh, Camel says the Mac Daddle make the Mac Daddle make you. Oh, jump, jump. Oh, I'm not singing it. Um, <laughs> uh, every time I see Melanie, this jumps in my head. I don't know why. Lamau, uh, Sarah, I got that. Okay, so I got everybody over there. Um, what's interesting is, um, by the way, huge, huge crowd tonight. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in wherever you're watching. First thing I hope that you'll do is we'll earn your follow if you're on Rumble or subscription if you're on YouTube and um do that then uh let me remind people that i'm joined by melanie mack who uh also creates excellent content works very very hard and um i'm going to show her rumble page right here it's linked in the description if you're on rumble 5.78 thousand oh now it went up to 5.82 you gained 400 followers Yay! while we've been streaming oh my goodness <laughs> yeah oh, but wow. when- I think when we first went live, I think it was at 5.76, to be honest. So you right. gained at least 600. Um, and right. then if you're watching on YouTube, um, her YouTube channel is right here, Melly Macko Boom, and her Twitter. Follow her on everything um, because, you know, that matters. And I appreciate her giving her time and energy for these streams. Disco Cobra says, last one, I promise. What does it say about me? I'm more conservative, but I like goth booty baddies. Or... <laughs> Just thick girls in general. Don't make me say thick girls again, Disco. <laughs> uh, plenty of average girls are cute, like Haley Williams of Paramore. Do you think she's average? I don't she's, think she's average. I think she's, she's pretty she's good looking girl, average. right? But she's not curvy. I, get what you mean. I guess yeah. that's what he means. Yeah, but she's definitely very pretty. But yeah, it's funny. A lot of uh, conservative guys like that alt the alt styles and stuff. So yeah. you would think they wouldn't, which there's still some who don't, but I think it is it is kind of funny because I used to I, I know at one point I started thinking like, oh, I have all these tattoos. I don't know if like I don't know if conservative guys will like me. People but have brought that up. They do. Some do bring yeah. it up and some don't like it. And hey, they're allowed not to like it. But as a whole, there's a, yeah. there's a lot of conservative guys who like the alt look. So, <laughs> well, and like the sleeve thing is not that big a deal. Like it's mm-hmm. not. I mean, as long as it's not an ex-boyfriend's name, then exactly. like, who cares? And, yeah. you know. I don't I, have I was, face tattoos, no plans for anything like that. <laughs> yeah, and as a avid reader of the Bible, I mean, I, I know that we are reborn when we go and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, God yeah. doesn't care about, you know, I if I can, you know, let everyone know. There as we my go. First-hand Thanks for your wisdom. Reading. Yeah. <laughs> <Fuck off. laughs> yeah. Okay, so. IGN, let me put this back on the screen. Uh, IGN, so then, of course, to complete that idea, obviously, IGN apologized, which, mm-hmm. to be fair, like, they kind of issued, you know, they danced around it a little bit, mm-hmm. but they did basically say, it was like four paragraphs of, like, qualifying. Right. And then it was like, but we're sorry. <laughs> like, yeah, the... The uh, Jeremy memers are watching the stream so much potential. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The um, I wanted to talk about. So let's. L- I want to finish with a topic that I hope doesn't offend people too much because I, I don't think it really will, and I I've never mm-hmm. really cared if stuff offends people. But I know that in my audience, mm-hmm. I won't speak for your audience because I think we share some, but not all. Right. Like it's not like if I if Tim and I are on a stream i know we share about 80 Uh percent so i know there are viewers in my audience that are legitimate men's rights people for good reason Mm -hmm. there are also people in my audience that have been wronged by women and hold a grudge a fine a fair one there are men in my audience who are i've gone through family courts in this country as a man and in many states not all Mm -hmm. but many states it's unfair for men yeah, And so they have their certain opinions around men's rights. And I respect those. What I don't respect is MR, like men's rights grifters who mm-hmm. preach a lifestyle, okay, and do not live it. And there are, I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to call out a bunch of people by name, but we're going to talk about this one in particular. Um, definitely not. Uh, right there, the name, second but... to the right tab, Tree of Logic. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll look at your eyeballs. Yes, that's the one. So it's been I've I've had a lot of beef with content creators in this space 
um, who don't like when I'm when I when I disagree with or argue with some of the people that I share viewers with. Mm-hmm. For example, I share viewers with Rollo, who's um, uh, he's a, a men's rights guy, or Fresh and Fit, or even Pearl. Yeah. I don't like any of these people. Mm-hmm. I think they are all toxic to men. Yep. And if you'll, uh, if if be, before I recoil people, because this is going to end up being a clip, it is my opinion that their entire business model, whether you're Pearl Davis, if that's what her name is, or you're Fresh and Fit, or you're Rollo Tom- Tomato, whatever his name is, Tomasi, your entire business model relies on unhappy men. Mm-hmm. So when your entire business model relies on unhappy men, you are financially motivated, subconsciously or not, to keep men unhappy. Yep. It's the same reason, in my opinion, that we haven't cured cancer. It's the same mm-hmm. reason that we haven't cured AIDS. Because yeah. if they could fix it with a pill, they would do that. But it's way better for them to sell you a thousand pills for the rest of your life. That's my opinion about the the men's rights Mm -hmm. content creation space does that make sense i agree i think it's a lot like what feminism has done for women is that they want to pretend like oh let's take real things and let's try to make uh let's try to to shine a light on these issues well they they just went way too far and have hurt women in the process so women who subscribe to this to a lot of the feminist ideologies and stuff are only hurting themselves. And I think we see the exact same thing in in some of these manosphere spaces is that, okay, they're bringing actual problems to the forefront and using that to manipulate people into a uh, a harmful cycle, just feminism for men. Yeah, thank you for that. Because as that's why like having a female in the show is so valuable because you're 100% right. I, I mean, obviously, because I'm a man, I knew that already. But you're right to highlight. That was a joke, but you're supposed to anyway, <laughs> believe the, all women. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. The, you're supposed to like, right. Feminism profits off keeping women unhappy and without agency the same way that me- the manosphere also does. Yep. And they have done some good things. These guys have probably saved some lives. These guys mm-hmm. have done some things. Okay. Yeah. But what I, I say all of that to say this for example these gentlemen of fresh and fit have have been caught multiple times begging women to have abortions to to kill their mm. unborn childs and they will go online every night and collect super chat after super chat after super chat talking about how abortions wrong and mm. how women are never women never take responsibility melanie they never yeah. take responsibility well I'm going to play a little clip here of a man, a woman totally not taking responsibility for firing ropes. And I'm sorry, this is a guy. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, what? No way. Yeah. So here's how you don't get pregnant. I know a lot of people, I'm going to give you some free knowledge right now. Don't have unprotected unprotected sex. That's like pretty good solution. Um, If you don't want a baby, don't have sex at all, really. But if you don't, if you want to, if you want to be really sure, don't have, don't be having relations with anyone until you're ready to have a baby, but at least, you know, use protection. But this is an individual that gets on the stage every night, collects super chats, talking about how women suck because they never take responsibility for their own actions. Let's hear how your, their king of the half of fresh and fit talks to his Chinese hooker bride uh, when she's pregnant. I want the baby because I don't want to kill the baby. I don't want to kill nobody. I don't want to. Can you hear? You're not. They just give you a pill and it's over. Yeah, you don't. You just take a pill. No. I'm pregnant. No, but that's what I'm saying. You just take a pill. That's what the pill does. Kills it. It kills your kid. Yeah. I can't. In my religion, we don't kill. You're not killing it. Yes, you are. But also, mm-hmm. um, let me acknowledge that this woman from China is probably having a, I don't want to, I can't, do I have, if I have any black viewers in chat, please give me the pass. But otherwise I will say <laughs> they may be referring to this as a keep a person baby. You may have heard 
this is someone who's from China. They're not an American citizen. I don't, whatever her motivations are, mm -hmm. uh, are, might be true, but th nobody made him fire ropes inside of her when they were, you know, nobody made right. him have unprotected sex with her. Exactly. So, again, this is your red pill king. Anchor baby would be the better. <laughs> yeah. <it checks. laughs> yes, you're right. I meant an anchor baby. Not yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> People say I don't hang out with black folks. That's proof. I know what they call it. I know what they. I know what they say. The um. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So this is your king of male responsibility. But by the way, the other host of this show also bagged a woman. But wait, wait, hold on a second. Here, let's go. Here. Okay. I want to keep the baby. Okay. Well, like I said, I just don't want any kids. <laughs> No. Okay, so what you gonna do? And what you gonna do to me? Nothing. Well, why did I do anything to you? Nothing. I love the police yeah. sirens in the background. All yeah. you do is hear the smoke alarm thing. Sorry, I did a racism, but I didn't like. Um, <laughs> to be fair, um, what people are hearing is they're sending voice messages back and forth. Mm -hmm. So maybe this chick is like, "Haha, I'm gonna get him on on," you know. I don't care. That's because the thing is, yeah, her intentions might be bad or whatever, but that doesn't change the fact that this happened and that's messed up. Right. Nobody forced you to have unprotected relations with this mm -hmm. woman. Uh, by the way, she's a 10, you're a four. You should have right. known. Right. You should have known. <laughs> baby, we don't need condom. We don't need a condom, baby. Don't worry. <laughs> this is the same trap every NBA player falls into. Yeah. All these NBA players have like freaking seven babies mamas look it up they keep oh baby you don't need a condom because if they get pregnant they're making 250 grand a year for 18 years off of mm -hmm. you okay so maybe she really loves him i can tell she looks like um she's a chinese only fans model i'm sure <laughs> she definitely loves this dude but again people will focus on that and be like yeah she trapped him nobody forced him to have unprotected relations with her nobody right Nobody, nobody forced him for that. And mm -hmm. like, again, this is Mr. Women never take responsibility. This is just mm -hmm. a, like 30 more seconds here. Well, why did I do anything to you? No, I know. So That's I a fine reply, by the way. He was like, what are you talking about? I'm not, by, yeah. by saying I don't want a baby. That's all. I mean. To the doctor, I guess. <laughs> just go to the doctor i guess go to the doctor yeah just scramble your baby and vacuum it out <laughs> just go to the doctor now i i will give now people who will be turned off by this clip and i i love it because people will get mad mm -hmm. they're like they won't make it this far in the video but i understand him perhaps being shocked right you right? get a freaking text message from somebody and which is clearly how it played out and they're like surprise yeah <laughs> Like I, I will generally forgive somebody for having a poor reaction when they're caught off guard. Or uh -huh. I will say also, like, it's not like he's yelling at her. It's not like he's, you know, being abusive. He's not like, right. he's... but again, this is from women never take responsibility. Give yeah. me super chats to call OnlyFans girls whores. Yep. While I have unprotected relations with a Chinese spy who's definitely <laughs> not trying to get pregnant and have an anchor baby. Right. Like, are you, are you joking? Like it's <laughs> any idiot could look at this chick. If yeah. this chick was hit me up. Okay. <laughs> I'm single. I'm doing my podcast. This chick's like, Oh baby, you don't, you don't need no condom. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, no shot. I'm using a condom and I'm taking it with me. Okay. Right. That's like, there, when this, she's this attractive, when the differential is this high, I'm taking that. Even if I, I might even not even consider it in my worst state, but even if, if I had mm -hmm. gotten weak, I'd right. be taking that with me. I'm like, no, I'm not leaving it here. I'm putting it in my pocket. I'm taking my little, my condom, put it in my pocket. I'm taking it with me because there, there's no way that this guy doesn't know that right. like this is an op. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll finish his, his spot here. So you want an abortion? 
He won't say oh, it. Yeah. Oh, he did. <laughs> he did. And why do you make me pray? I want now? a kid with her. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way that that's true. But then it's like, oh wow, like. So just think about it. It's meant to be. God Sorry? wants. God wants you to have the baby. She's working him. I'm sure she is. They, she yeah. is. Want you to have a baby. Seven years never happened, and then you're relate in a relate. You're fucking me for a month, and I'm pregnant. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> she played him perfectly. <laughs> she did. But, yeah, she did. She, yeah. So I'm not. She, I, yeah. I don't. I definitely am not saying her intentions were all perfect and amazing. Yeah. But just like you said, like this is hypocrisy on on his part. He's not taking responsibility for the situation. Um, and he's. This is an outcome that he clearly didn't want, but that's the thing with life is that we're going to run into situations that we didn't want in general, but there, this is where your actual morality comes to play. <laughs> Imagine, are you going right? to step up and handle it the right way? Or are you going to do something like this? And, and it is really easy to, when you see the, this topic and everything like that, you have a bunch of like blue haired like pig nose ring women that are just like oh yeah like that was signs saying i've had yeah. 18 abortions Flush and the I'm baby, so make a yeah cake. exactly and so yeah. yeah it's so easy to see that and just blame women for all of this going on but there are definitely situations like this where men are, are pressuring women to to get abortions and stuff ultimately hey what the woman does, I mean, she's still doing it. So I'm not saying she's perfect in this scenario, but still, this is a problem in society. Not just it's it's not just one gender that does this. Well, and if uh, if uh, before everyone calls you a feminist, this is a position that I have always held. Like, I it is too easy to call women whores. Like, women can't have a hundred body count without without a hundred men willing to have sex with them. Like right. this is yeah, it takes two it takes two to tango. This yep. guy is an idiot, okay? And by the way, we can all look at this and be like, child, please look at this guy, look at her. We yeah. know what was going on here. But guess what? So did he. And he was willing to have unprotected relations with her yep. repeatedly, I assume. And she played him for a fool, like every NBA player. They, they teach these guys how they get in the NBA. Do not like, oh, she's going to say, don't let her bring the condom because they have poke holes in it. Don't do this. All these scenarios where it's like the women are bad. No, bro, keep it in your pants. It's in really this not case, that I hard. I think they're both are probably in the wrong 50, in this 50. for different reasons. She's probably yeah, predatory. She's, if she yeah. was trying to trap him in this situation, hey, she's wrong for that, but he's definitely wrong for how he's trying to handle this. Yeah, right. He's like, well, just, well, here's like a few seconds left. And then I don't like, know. It, now I just think about if, like, if you force me to kill the baby, then you are a sin. Well, we already said by having sex. <laughs> but, that is also yeah. true, but but still, yeah. you, it doesn't mean you just keep making things worse. <laughs> yeah, it's not like you have a one sin uh, get out of jail free card. Uh, yeah, and then like that's what the wild thing is. And then like, you, look, any idiot could look at this chick and be like, she if she was from China, any other foreign country, and be like, dude, like, be careful. Get him, like, are you crazy? And like, uh, she's like, oh, here's double pregnancy test. You've always told me you wanted to be your baby's. He probably said, oh, baby, this is like things that guys say to mm. not wear a rubber. They're like, oh, you know, hello. <laughs> like, I don't want to go down yeah. there. I don't want to get gross. But like, um, <laughs> he clearly was like, hey, we're not. And like, by the way, probably her plan all along right. doesn't change anything. Mm hmm. She doesn't have a podcast talking about how 304s are responsible for all this bad stuff. He does. Yep. And, you know, like, I don't understand the numbers. He goes on to say, like, I'm broke. I can't have a baby, blah, blah, blah. Bro, if you don't, if you can't have a baby, don't, don't uh, put your pee in a V. It's super easy. Yep. I don't have any babies. <laughs> like, it's super, super easy to not have a baby. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this guy's a grown man. He's not 17. I cannot, I could, I could at least, I'm not saying I agree with it, but I can understand you're 15, 14, 15, 16, 17. This guy's a grown man with plenty yeah. of money and plenty of means. He has yep. zero reason to not bring this kid into the world other yep. than his own 
I assume financial risk. I don't know what like chick's super yeah. hot. Like if she loves right. him, dude, he's never doing better than that. Why is he trying exactly. to say, what is he doing? Like, does he think fresh and fit podcast is going to be a thing in three years? It's not <laughs> okay. Like the quartering isn't going to be a thing in three years. Like time passes. People are relevant for a short period of time. You spend your money wisely. You put it in the bank and then you, and then you go and you live your life like a normie. Mm -hmm. Fresh and fit podcast is it going to be a thing? I mean, how many abortions do these guys have to have and still be able to get on that live stream and talk about women? Because I've already seen, I'm already going to see. I see Duffy. I'm not calling you out, Duffy, but I'm going to bring it up. People will say, to be fair, baby trapping isn't okay. Okay. We agree. <laughs> yeah. We agree. But you know how you stop 100% of baby traps? You yep. don't have unprotected sex with a woman. It's super yes. easy. Like, I don't, I don't, I just don't get it. And this I, is I, another example. And it reaffirms a lot of my faith. This is another example of like where the Bible is right. You know, the Bible has a standard. The Bible says, hey, you know, husband and wife. And yeah. the Bible holds, uh, the puts men and women both responsible for this kind of stuff. There's no double standards of, Okay, well, the woman's only at fault for this or the man's like, it's okay. We have our guidelines. We have the Bible. God's rules for a reason. He created humanity. So he understands way more than we could. So, oh, look, it works again. Bible proven true. <laughs> yeah. You can't have a baby out of wedlock with only one of the two pieces of the puzzle. I'll, I mean, yes, you can say, oh, well, okay. There's some nefarious stuff. You know, right. <laughs> no women have ever gotten pregnant off a toilet seat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like that it, it's like I, I just i i this is my thing and and like i do think that the mra men's rights i think there is value that exists in the even in the worst of the worst like pearl or right. fresh and fit or rollo or any of these other guys okay there is value in bringing men together and teaching men agency and teaching right. them responsibility yeah but if you're going to get in front of that camera and that microphone it'd be like if i just like shut off my microphone and went to a up up like a pro-choice rally where i went i shut off my microphone and i was like mm -hmm. doing dei marches or some weird stuff like that like this dude i don't know if he's had a live i don't know if fresh and fit has been live since this came out mm -hmm. but just so people know this isn't the first time one of their hosts have have begged a woman to have an abortion right. and it's like these dudes are leading men tens of thousands of men on their live streams telling them about you know this is how it is to be a man bro i'll tell you what it is to be a man it's taking responsibility and the reaction mm -hmm. that this guy had he should have just been like oh yeah i was firing ropes into this chick un uninterrupted for two months straight and she got pregnant i'm not surprised like okay cool we have a kid now. You want to get married? I mean, I don't yeah. know. Like, I don't know. Well, like, I mean, like, yeah, the back in the day that, you know, you had shotgun weddings. Right. <laughs> they call them all that. We have, well, let's get three months. We got to get married. That's that where the kid's that, born. No one knows. It's yeah. like, okay, they got themselves in a, in a non-ideal situation, but they took responsibility for it and they did the right thing. You don't yeah. see much of that as much anymore. Well, I think you do just not out of the, out of the, uh, I'm selling men's rights you know, True. activist community, you give me super chat. My whole thing with the MRA community, and this is a really inconvenient fact. I'm talking about the MRA, like commentator community, not the viewers, not the people who just want to find other men who could help them be better men. I'm talking about the grifters, the people who take advantage of it. Like mm -hmm. none of them live the principles that they're selling. I assure you. And also these these individuals um, do far more harm and they just care about super chats. They just care about the money. These guys don't care about the community. These guys don't care about helping men. If they did, then they would live the life that they tell their viewers to mm -hmm. live. It's so obvious. It's like, I don't even understand how you could tune into these guys. And by the way, side note, mini rant, every single woman who has an OnlyFans account, right? That goes on Fresh and Fit or that goes on whatever podcast. These are two very popular podcasts that their central thesis is whore is bad. 
right? I think that's, is right. that a fair assumption, right? Yeah, yeah. They're dunking on whores, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Every, let me ask you a question, Mel. Okay. okay. Do you think that they would have an endless stream of OnlyFans women to go on there if, if people weren't signing up? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's why yeah. I don't, some of these dudes that'll sit and complain about this, it's like, oh, well, they're subscribing to, to OnlyFans girls. Of and course all that. they are. And, and why? Yeah. Just stop. Just stop. And then these hoes don't have a market anymore. They shouldn't be making OnlyFans, but these guys shouldn't be buying them either. This is an easily solved problem if you just stop purchasing it. Stop yeah. watching it. Find a wife. Like, this is, I think, one reason in society there is such an issue with even a lot of young people right now and dating and this and that. It's because, you know, hookup culture, OnlyFans, all this pornography online yeah well all the commodification stuff. of relationships through digital apps you know like yeah you can find another partner and by the way someone says jeremy define red pill manosphere community it's disingenuous to group all these content creators together that's true there are people out there that genuinely care that's true i just think fresh and fit don't give a shit about men i guarantee yeah. you and I guarantee you that Pearl Davis does not care about men. I, I agree. It is, it is their business model mm -hmm. to extract lonely, sad, rudderless men from their money. Yeah. That's it. If they were helping you, they wouldn't be making money. And it, it, there are good creators out there that care about men. There are people that, you know, I genuinely think Jordan Peterson cares about men. I, I do. I think so. I, I, I do think that. Yep. There, there are people out there who you know who care about men and who you know want but like until my dying breath i will tell men that pearl davis does not give a shit about you yeah. and they and they like these people are like yeah but she makes a lot of good points 80 percent of divorces are initiated by women yeah well 100 percent of those men marry the wrong woman then okay right. so do you want to live in a world where you have no agency no personal responsibility then listen to her shitty content yeah but if you want to understand why you make the decisions you do why you like just don't listen to fresh and fit just don't listen to pearl davis look at what their business model is and then understand that when it is uh diametrically opposed to their livelihood to fix a problem there yep. is no incentive to fix it just like the pharmaceutical industry um hello darkness says sticks got a break yesterday uh, Melanie hasn't W for the Patreon. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Melanie has been, she's the hardest, she's the hardest working, working woman in streaming. This, this broad is on every stream imaginable. It's annoying. <laughs> it's been a lot. I'm, I'm dialing yeah. back now. Like, well, I've, I've got a couple next week. And then after that, it's like, <laughs> I want to focus on the like stuff I've already booked. It's like, I need to put more focus on my own stuff. So it's like, okay, this and my own stuff will be a nice, uh, break because it's been a lot <laughs> yeah so by the way if you're on rumble right now um rumble people all oh, just went from 5.82 to 5.85 oh yay! yeah so we're gonna get you probably over six thousand today over oh wait that's nine thousand um if uh melanie's rumble link is of course allowed in chat um on on uh youtube by the way what a thousand people on youtube so shout out to all of you on youtube um you know, if you're not already subscribed to Melanie's uh, Go Boom channel, I'm going to put the link in there. Go subscribe to her. If you haven't followed her on Twitter, um, definitely do that. She's got some merch coming out yes. soon. And um, she's got some great stuff. Melanie, you are somebody who is on the up and up. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are a rising star. I have attached my... Mm -hmm. I have attached my... Uh, anchor to you for you to take me into the stratosphere <laughs> <laughs> what do you have going on um the rest of this week what do you got going on because now we won't see you until tuesday and it's gonna I be know. sad panda yeah. yeah so i mean the rest of this week i've got like i'm still gonna upload on rumble and on my Melanie Macko Boom channel on YouTube. Yeah. I'll, I'll, if there's like a good topic, I'll cover for that. Um, you just did one today. Everyone should go check it out. I if you're did, on YouTube yeah. or if you're on Rumble, she just uploaded a video today. So check it out. Yeah. So, so I'll do that. Then I'll sp spend the weekend with my family. Uh, I, I need those 
disconnect from the internet on weekends and, and hang out at their little farm. Very yeah. important for the mental health. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'll do that. Then I'll, I'll just come back, keep doing this. I'm working on a, my own live show, go boom live, which once I get everything all restructured that I'm working on and then bringing my Bible do... channel to rumble all that, then I can, Sorry, yeah, I'm going to interrupt you. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I say you should definitely <laughs> like go live on a, non-competitive time slot on uh -huh. at least Wednesdays and Fridays or okay. Wednesday, at least Wednesdays, because, you know, cause we're live on Tuesdays. Right. So then we can promote your show on Wednesdays, like just, yeah. you know, like strategic, strate strategically, you know, That'd it's like, great. Oh, we'll go watch your show Wednesday at, you know, yeah, I think Wednesday or, would... or after, by the way, real yeah, money. Then if you were live after this, then we could just say, go watch them out. But then you'd be doing like four hours straight. You know, so that right. Would be I mean, I normally like to stream at a later slot. I think Wednesdays are good for me too. That's what I've been doing my gaming streams. So I think I'm going to swap Wednesday for like that, the, the go boom live. And then like on Thursdays late, that's when I'll probably do a gaming stream. As you well. don't actually play video games. You're a fake gamer girl. That's <laughs> of I course. I mean, does, does Melanie have a rumble channel? Yes. It's in the chat. Everyone go subscribe. It's also in the description. I want, if she's not over 6,000 subscribers by the time I wake up tomorrow, I will, I'll be very sad panda. Although <laughs> it's, it's been like tonight's been good. Oh, now I went up to five from 5.85 to 5.87. So it's cruising right. up good. Um, so yeah, you, I think it's like, yeah, a couple, you know, almost a thousand subs tonight while we're live. And then obviously a lot of people watch the show on replay. Um, mm -hmm. a lot of people on YouTube tonight, by the way, it's one of our biggest YouTube shows. So shout out to everyone who's on YouTube. Awesome. Eventually I'm going to say, you know, stop being a bundle of sticks. Come on over to, to rumble. But for now, I'm just <laughs> happy. I'm happy that you tuned in. So yeah. So Melanie obviously has her Bible channel, which uploaded a video during our live stream. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's great. And then, um, Melanie is, uh, I stream Monday through Friday, 5 30 Eastern to 7 30 Eastern. Melanie joins me on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Obviously, I mean, I should say you never know when she's going to be here, so you should tune in every night. But <laughs> she is here Tuesdays and Thursdays. Make sure you follow her channels and her um, both on Rumble if you're a Rumble viewer and um, on YouTube if you're a YouTube viewer. And um, if you're on Twitch or X and you're actually watching this right now, pick YouTube or Rumble and follow her. If you haven't followed me yet, please do. And um, we'll be back with Melanie. I'll be back tomorrow in 22 hours. I have a live stream Friday. I compete up against uh, the other small show that I also own, according to Alex Jones, Friday Night Fights. <laughs> but like, I, I still have, when I moved to this new time slot, I was like, ugh, Friday's frick. Yeah. But like, I thought about, oh, I do this time slot. I thought, oh, I could do Monday through Thursday, 5.30 Eastern, and then on Fridays, I could do noon. But then I was like, ah, then everyone that's going to show up on Friday, they're used to seeing me. True. Like, I can't build a round. You know, I can't, I can't fill the, fill the round FNT. I'll, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't like to compete against them, but like, I'm also like, my viewers are my viewers too. You know, yeah. plus, I make the money anyway because I own Friday Night Tights. So exactly. Matter. There you go. But that's yeah. the thing is, is with a bunch of us in this space, just having a bunch of different shows and stuff, everybody's really, cool about it i've even heard like uh geeks and gamers jeremy from there talk about it and say hey sometimes there's going to be overlaps between yeah. some of our shows it happens it's okay it's not we try issue. to yeah we try to do the yeah. best because you know my biggest thing is i'm going to make one last pitch because um tim pool goes live in a half hour if you're a tim pool viewer okay you gotta i mean leave your super chats here my whole, my, the whole reason I went with this time slot is so that I could steal all of Tim Pool's money because, <laughs> I, because I actually read all the super chats. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, well, I'll go live before Tim Pool and then everyone will spend their super chat money on us. And then they'll go to Timmy Pool, which is fine. Okay. Timmy Pool is fine. Um, but he doesn't need super chats. He has 40,000 live viewers. He doesn't need. Wow. He's, he's killing it. 30, 40,000 live. I would be having an instant panic attack. Eight to 10,000. <laughs> eight to 10,000 is the most I could even handle. Right. I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could do more than that. I would be, I would be extremely uncomfortable. 
I'd be like, thinking, I'm gonna was be... this a mistake? This many people watching me? Is yeah. It... <laughs> yeah. Was this an accident? <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be on Crowder's show in a few days and like oh, nice. I'm telling him like it's he, like he is he's live at like eight or nine in the morning. I'm like, uh -huh. I'm gonna have to have like four Bloody Marys. <laughs> and then um, oh wait, I oh wait, we might have we might have to meet up. Because I'll oh. be down there soon. Oh, yeah, yeah, really? yeah, 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 That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I'll right. I'll talk to you offline, but okay. I, I'm like it's a small window, but I'm there Sunday through Tuesday coming up. Awesome. And um, but uh I'm like, I have to go to Crowder Show. I've been I've been I've been taking all of the hits for defending them online. This right. MF for better pass through some viewers. <laughs> um, so I have to go down there. I don't like traveling. Mm -hmm. I only travel like once a year. It's it's very I get anxiety. It sucks. I'm a big guy, so it sucks. We right. actually almost hung out last time I was in DFW. <laughs> And then yeah. what happened? I think you were like creeped out or something. You're like, I don't no, know. there was that one time whenever I was working at GameStop TV that you were like, hey, I'm going to be in the Dallas area and I was going to hang out. But uh -huh, then, uh -huh, but uh -huh. then somebody uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. called GameStop and said, oh, she's friends with the white supremacist. Uh -huh. like, oh, yeah. Pictures and people see that I'm already on thin ice with I was on thin ice with GameStop at that time. Yeah. So I was like, I just I can't right now. But now I don't have to worry about any of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, now you're you're contractually obligated to. We'll see where I'm at. I'm gonna be staying at okay. the same hotel this time. If you remember where I was at, but um, the uh, yeah. So I'll be down there on Crowder show coming up. But nothing. Nobody will notice anything different because even when I'm traveling, I get all my videos done. We'll still be doing our live streams. Nice. And um, Melanie, thank you so very much for being here last to lol not a cat says i'm not a tim pool fan but you can have some shekels anyway also <laughs> you melanie should stream some games oh people always say that and then if we did you wouldn't watch this yeah, is my only thing. concern gaming stuff doesn't get as much views as the regular talking if melanie did like that put her camera up higher and then like had it like zoomed in on her chest area she might do, <laughs> oh, like, but everyone always like what I think maybe we'll do maybe like in fall, maybe we'll do like a, a game with our viewers, like a, okay. some kind of thing like that. That could be Because cool. people always say that we, oh, game, game, game. And I was like, okay, well, I streamed Final Fantasy online and there was like 70 people that showed up. Right. And, um, but maybe we could do something as we build our show, as we build our Tuesday night, Thursday night crowd, get a little discord group forum and we can play some like. I don't know, some private lobby yeah. games where we can all play. Like, I, I want to say, what is the jelly bean game? I know it's not popular anymore. Jelly but... bean game. Oh, all oh guys. that's all guys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like some equivalent type game we could play with our viewers one night, maybe as like a, when we reach a thousand members, you know, we have okay. one, we have 11 now. So we only need 989 more. Um, uh, oh, radio beat says, uh, Glad it's been going great for the new co-host, Jem, Germ. Uh, fun to see the new show evolve. Tell Melanie if I could help with the brand stuff. Oh, radio. I know who you are. Uh, Gian. Yes. He is a great graphic designer. He's very, very good. Oh, okay. So if you need anything for your like t-shirt design or whatever, uh -huh. let me know. He's, uh, he's, he's awesome. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, he's a foreigner, so you can pay him like pennies on the dollar, which is great. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, and Matt said, go to Fuel City Tacos when in Dallas and eat their Elitos. It's corn in a cup. It was fantastic. Their tacos are good, too. Okay. I'm only in for like one extra day um, unless I make Crowder pay for more, which I might do. Um, <laughs> all right. So that's it for the show tonight. We're live again tomorrow, 530 Eastern. Melanie may or may not be here. You'll have to tune in to find out. She could pop in at any moment, even if she's not you here. Never you never know. You never know. Yeah. Go subscribe to her Rumble channel if you're watching on Rumble. Go subscribe to her YouTube channel if you're on her YouTube. Oh, it went up to 5.89. Oh, nice. You're going to, yeah. You're All gonna right. Make this um, go check out her stuff. Melanie, you're the best. Have a great Thank weekend. You. Enjoy touching grass. <laughs> um, All right. And uh, we'll be back on, we'll see you on maybe Tuesday, huh? Yeah, for sure. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.